there. Um, I'm sorry, but do, do I know you? You've been looking for me? You want to know about my story. <laughs> I'm no one special. <laughs> my father told me it would take an entire lifetime until the stars sang my name. He used to speak about the great deeds of Hercules and how I'd have to have the strength and wisdom of a god if I wanted my story to live on. <laughs> Funny things, gods. We have access to all the stars in every universe and have explored endlessly, yet still we find only whispers and artifacts that speak of their existence. But I suppose I'm getting sidetracked. My story isn't anything special. Are you sure you want to hear it? I may not understand your reasons, but I suppose I wouldn't mind the company for a little while. You say you know my name, but I haven't had the pleasure of introducing myself. My name is Zafira Novastrider. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. You've happened to catch me at a good time, as I just made port on this planet this morning and was intending to stay a while. Rest, recharge the batteries, all that stuff we're told to do does stay alert, focused. I personally rest better on the surface of a foreign planet, bathing in the light of an undiscovered sun than in the noise of this busy city. New Atlantis is beautiful, yes, but I'm not the city type. That aside, we wouldn't get to have this chat if I was anywhere but here, so if I take one positive thing from this trip, I suppose it could be this. Before I start, what would you like to know about me? Everything? There's so much to tell. I... I suppose I could keep it short, but my mom did always tell me I have a bad habit of rambling. Oh well, I'll do my best. I'll start by saying that my upbringing was far more unique than most children you'll find running around in the city. There were no high-rise apartments with comfy cribs and pretty mobiles in my childhood. No curling up in front of a screen Saturday morning with my favorite show and a bowl of cereal. Mom cooking something delicious in the kitchen. Dad reading a book that seems all too boring to read as a child. Those are fantasies for children that aren't me. You see, I was bred, born, and raised in a spaceship. My crib was a built-in unit in my parents' bedroom. My mobile was the window that looked out into the vast expanse of space. I swear I still remember being an infant and staring out at those stars. We lived and thrived among them, unaware of what a normal childhood was like. My parents strive to provide all the comforts a child would need, despite our unusual living arrangements. We'd make port on different planets often to stock up on food and supplies, and normally enjoyed all the creature comforts you would in a home here on Jemison. There were the times we'd occasionally have to go completely dark for weeks on end because we'd discovered a new planet with hostile species that weren't so happy about us discovering them. We were explorers through and through, peaceful to a fault, but that didn't mean we didn't end up in some hairy situations. I remember the first time we were being chased by hostiles. I was six years old and terrified. I wasn't yet old enough to venture onto new planets that my parents hadn't already deemed safe. Though when I saw my mom and dad sprinting back to the ship, screaming at me to start the engines, I froze up and stared. Something in my young brain kicked on though when I saw the beings chasing after them. From that moment, my fight or flight instinct has never failed. If you're looking for someone who can make a quick decision to help the group, that's me. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect, and I've made my fair share of poor decisions in my life, but I always have people's best interests in mind, and I do my best to look out for everyone. My parents taught me after the first encounter with hostiles how to use a gun and how to use it right. By that I mean only using it when necessary. Ever since then, I've never been afraid to pick up a gun and fight when it matters most. People always assume by my outward appearance that I'd be more frail or fearful, just as they did my mother. But we're far from it. We just choose to honor the lives lost in the name of what's right, or peace, or whatever you fight for, I suppose. One thing they did teach me is that corruption is prevalent anywhere you go. Trusting others is always a risk, and while we take care of those who take care of us, evil lurks in all of the closest places. Despite knowing that, I strive to be kind first and take up arms only as a last resort. I know sometimes it's unavoidable, but I do my best. 
I probably get that from my parents. My mom is as angelic of a human as you can get. The idea of harming anything hurts her more than most of us can understand. The odd thing is she's not delicate or fragile in any way. I've never seen anyone fight the way my mom has in the moments that it's mattered, but the hours she spends weeping afterwards kill me and I hopefully don't need to explain why. My dad is the opposite of my mother, seeking knowledge and new information, and mostly unbothered by the idea of death. He believes that even after death we're reborn somewhere in the vast expanse of space. The very reason we're explorers is because he hopes to find some almighty deity one day. Maybe that's why he told me stories of Hercules. He's like him, just trying to prove he's worthy for our creator's greatness. Me? Well, I fall somewhere in the middle. If you could combine my mom's compassion for all life and humanitarian efforts, as well as willingness to do whatever's necessary to stand up for what's right, with my dad's desire to explore and discover and find one of the secrets that lie beneath the dirt of a foreign planet, then you'd have me. Yeah, I truly am a blend of their best traits. Well, and worse. <laughs> what's that I said about being perfect? Despite my parents' differences, it made my childhood bittersweet. Through my dad's love of exploration, we saw planets unlike most children ever get to see. From planets devoid of life, covered in toxic waters that'll melt your flesh in seconds, with plants that then drink the blood and turn a horrifying shape of red, to planets with deserts and rivers that stretch into its entire expanse. It was an experience I still chase to this day. Blend that with my mom's love of life and willingness to chase it down into the void, well, We'd be here all day talking about it. There was only one time during my childhood that I disliked, and it was any time we made port. Yeah, as shocking as it is, I didn't miss the companionship of other children or beings, and any time we visited, you'd catch me far away from civilization, admiring the view of the city from up high and out of sight. The only way I could find any peace. I suppose as I aged into a teenager, that changed a bit hormones and all that jazz. I suddenly had a desire to meet and learn about new types of beings and creatures and less about planets devoid of life. I remember one supply trip in particular, we'd found a cat in the busy city street and I begged my mom to let me keep it. They tried to talk me out of it, cats in space, dangerous, that sort of thing. I begged and cried until they agreed. I never asked for much, so when I did, I fought hard for it. Snow lived with us for a few years on the ship, but sadly passed away before I turned 18. I'd always had dreams of taking her with me on grand adventures, but lifespans are never long enough, are they? No, did instill one parting gift on me, and that's a love that resurfaces any time I see an adorable creature. <laughs> there was one planet I found a pink gecko-like creature and nearly begged to take them with us too. Alas, me and Pinky hung out for a few minutes and then parted ways. I didn't want to make Snow jealous. Sadly, I don't have any pets for now. My parents told me when I turned 18 that being responsible for another life all on my own was something that I wasn't ready for. I'm 23 now, and while I feel as though I could handle it, I spent seven years listening to my dad tell me it was inhumane to have a creature on a spaceship. My argument was that they had me with them all that time, which probably hurt them more than my young mind cared to think about, but I suppose we've let it go now. Speaking more on my coming of age into adulthood, I knew the moment I turned 18 that I wanted to venture out on my own. My parents pleaded with me to stay with them, but as much as I adore them, I wanted to carve my own destiny and path, and explore where I wanted. I chose to live here on New Atlantis and work, taking odd jobs off planets to save up for my own ship. Something about earning it. Well, I ended up getting my ship after all, but not in the way I expected. We'll get to that later, though. I remember I was so excited after I was finally able to get it fixed and upgraded. I called my parents and we talked for hours. My dad gave me so much pointless advice about ship repairs, flight, space travel. I honestly thought he'd never hang up. Though, so, I say that and I sadly haven't heard from them since. We've been exchanging messages and keeping each other updated as to whereabouts, but time and space travel is a funny thing. It's been a few months since I've heard from them now and I'm admittedly getting worried. I remember a few parts of my childhood where we'd go completely dark for up to eight months at a time to avoid the eyes and ears of curious parties. My dad does do some top secret work for the Enlightened, so it led us into some scary territories at time. But we always resurfaced with little to no issues. I'm holding out that I'll hear from them soon. And I suppose that leads us to now. 
sitting in this cafe. I've had some adventures for sure, but I'm still just an explorer, finding new life and fighting for what's right. I don't think I'm all that interesting, but I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. Not many people care about the lives of those around them, so you must be just a little bit extra special. <laughs> You want to hear of my adventures? It's been a long day and I don't like talking about myself this much. I'll tell you what, if you come back tomorrow, then we can continue this conversation. I'll even order dinner for us, on me. Wonderful. Well, have a lovely evening and don't get lost to the stars. I don't like the looks of this. What is it? I am uncertain why you believed conflict with us was advisable. This is so annoying. Tell the marshal we'll come quietly. You'd make a decent ranger with the way you handled that. Find anything useful? <laughs> As always. I forgot Explorer was on your application. Must have been slow work when you don't have a ship. <laughs> <laughs> 